I found in my parts collection this UM3482A melody generator, which I got from Radio Shack about 30 years or more ago. It comes with 12 songs. They say you can use it for musical doorbells, telephone music on hold. Over at usermanual.wiki, I found this Radio Shack datasheet. So it's got two pages. This claims to have three instrument sounds piano, organ, and mandolin, but I couldn't get that working. Maybe I didn't try hard enough. There's some playback control pins so you can have it automatically play and stop or keep looping all the songs. This data sheet says you can operate this typically 1.5 volts, but you can operate it up to 5. Here's the songs that are in this chip. Some of these look familiar. Home Sweet Home. I assume it's not this version and a couple of application circuits. So I'm using this low-cost application circuit, resistor and capacitor 1, control and oscillator for the whole chip, and that controls a time base for both the tone and the tempo. So if this oscillator changes, it will change the speed of the melody as well as the pitch of the melody at the same time, like slowing down or speeding up a record. You can build an amplifier circuit, or you can just use a transistor to drive a speaker. Then I found a more elaborate 9-page datasheet for the actual chip series. Again, powered by 1.5 volt battery, but this time the absolute maximum ratings are only up to 3 volts, not 5 like Radio Shack said. So I'm operating this at 3 volts just in case. These circuits are also a little different from the Radio Shack ones. If we look at the low-cost application for Radio Shack, we actually have this extra RS resistor, and we have these component values in general, but the low cost circuit in the bigger datasheet has no resistor on this pin, and it has a 75K here. So what I found is if I make this a 100 pico and a 100K pot, I can use the pot to change the pitch and simultaneously the playback speed between way too slow and way too fast, which is a good adjustment range. And here's the circuit with a tiny speaker just to test it as it is. Here's what some of the melodies sound like. Now I wonder if I can maybe improve the sound just a little. So I'm going to use this sound logic board that I made last week. This is a block diagram-ish schematic of what I intend to do with this melody generator chip. The blue traces indicate one possible set of connections, and then the green traces here are a different set. The first thing I'm doing, this being a 3 volt circuit, it needs to be 5 volt compatible for this board. So I'm using that transistor that used to drive a speaker, and I'm just turning it into an open collector that I'm pulling up to 5 volts from this board, and then the highs and lows will be a pull up to 5, and a short to ground when the transistor's on. But the first thing I do is I throw it through this buffer on the soundboard. What that does, it normalizes both the high and low voltage levels of this and the impedance characteristics. So it converts it into a 74HC compatible high and low with a series 10K resistor because all of these other gates on the board and this binary counter are all running at 74HC levels with 10K series resistors since that's how I designed this board. And in that case, when I want to put these signals into these RC filters, I'm taking some sort of a tone from this board at those high and low voltages with the series 10K, and the melody generator now also has the same high-low with a series 10K into another one of these, and then I want to mix these together by just directly connecting their outputs and throwing that to the input of the audio amp. 
So instead of one of these being a transistor with a pull up and then a short to ground, which will change the characteristics, now the signals will be relatively balanced and they will mix better. So doing this, I can do a couple of things. First, by just using this melody generator as an input clock on this binary counter, just like when I used a 555, and then all those Q outputs are just sub octaves of that original tone, now I can generate the same melody at lower pitches that are separated by one octave. So I can actually combine these signals and make harmony. So because these are all square wave audio signals, in order to combine them for audio, that's why I might take one as the original sound and then take another somewhere else in the circuit and I put them through a low pass filter and it will smooth those square waves out a bit, making them closer to an analog audio waveform and that will mix a lot easier into a single audio tone where I can combine the two pitches and get the harmony. And here's what that sounds like. Another thing I can do to try to change the way the tone sounds, I can take a couple of different signals that have the melody at different pitches, combine those into one gate and get an output, then combine that signal with the original melody in another gate and take the result of that as my actual audio out. And in that case, here's a logic analyzer hooked up to all these points in the system. D0 is the main tone generator, so that would be the signal that's clocking the 4040 as well as going to this gate. D1 and D2 are going to be various Q outputs, which is basically a lower tone version of the main melody, and those are the two signals going into this gate. So what's happening here, this D1 will be the melody at a certain pitch, D2 is the same melody at a lower pitch, but when you put these through a NAND gate, this slower one acts as a cutoff or enable gate for the higher frequency. So looking here at the output of the gate, combining these two inputs, when the slower signal is high on the NAND gate, it allows the faster moving signal to pass through the gate inverted. So when the higher pitched melody input is high, 
it's enabled to go through the NAND and it comes out as a low. When that input is low and it's still enabled, the output is high. So you get an inverted copy of the same pitch. But then when that slower signal happens to be at a low section, the NAND gate is going to have a constant high out, no matter what that other pitch is doing. So it essentially blocks it. So you get a burst of the higher frequency and then nothing, and then a burst, and nothing, and so on. Then you take that pattern, combine it with the original higher frequency melody, and D4 is the final signal output, which is combining D3 from the other gate, and D0, the original melody. But now, instead of momentarily disabling the tone, the way the gates are inverting the logic, now we are going to actually enable instead of block this other higher frequency tone. So we are either going to pass this gate's output in some combination with the highs and lows of the original melody and get this pattern, or when that gate wasn't doing anything, it's still enabling the higher frequency pitch to come through. So we get this weird combo and the original melody alternating. So that's how you just get weird effects and tone variations as you keep adding more digital logic. And so what this might do is sharply cut off the original melody or pulse it a bit. So let's see how that sounds. So that's what this melody synthesizer from 30 years ago sounds like. We don't have to be stuck with its own characteristics. We can try to enhance it with other kinds of circuits. And maybe I'll try some other things in the future. It might even be worth putting this chip on its own little breakout board so I can just hook it up to other audio circuits and filters as time goes on and I don't have to breadboard it all over again. We'll see.